thanks for joining us everyone you're all very very welcome and um, just to uh, give a quick introduction my name is Anya Murphy I'm the marketing manager with um, HubX Ireland incorporating bike to work and uh, so we have our presentation this morning on an introduction to cycling and we have uh, Paul Norton who is our account manager with HubX Ireland at bike to work uh, Paul is going to be going through some of the um, benefits of cycling and if, in particular cycling into work. Uh, we're also joined on the call this morning by uh, Scott Graham from uh, Cycling Ireland. Hi Scott. Uh, so Scott is going to go through, Scott is the, sorry, the Marketing and Communications Manager with Cycling Ireland. He's going to go through a little bit about Cycling Ireland membership and the many features and benefits of uh, the membership and with all of the different um, you know, uh, things that they provide with that. Um, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end. I would ask everyone to stay on mute if you can and to maybe raise your hand or drop a question into the chat if you have a question to ask either of our speakers. And then finally, also, if you could give us a follow on social media, whichever is your choice. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter or LinkedIn. We'd, uh, we'd love to see you there. Um, without further ado, I'll pass you over to, uh, to Paul. Thanks, Anya. Uh, you're very welcome today, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm just going to go through a few slides here this morning. Um, some of the benefits of cycling, um, the sustainability side of things, um, breaking down some of the barriers to entry, um, the cycle to work scheme, a few points on that. And then I'll hand you over to, to Scott from Cycling Ireland. So first of all, some of the uh, the benefits benefits of cycling. Um, some of the physical benefits, you know, you're going to have an improved cardiovascular system, increased muscle strength, improved lung health. Um, it, it's a great type of fitness to do, which will um, also have a low impact. So something you can do later into life and, and later into older age. Um, if you are specifically cycling to work and let's say it's about an hour commute um, in total both ways you're going to burn around 500 to 600 calories uh, in that hour uh, and that's just done at like a, a moderate pace and um, so it's a great way to, to fit in your 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 week your your fitness your fitness regime um, and it's a uh, a great way to, to stay active. Some other positive benefits associated with cycling other than the physical will be things like an improved mental well-being, increased brain power. It, it, there's more blood flow going to your brain, which means you're less vulnerable to the risk of things like dementia and you know less chance of uh, cancer, less chance of heart disease. Um, I think on the previous slide, there's actually a stat which you're 52% less likely to, to die from heart disease if you cycle to work on a daily basis. Um, increased productivity, I definitely attest to that one. Um, I cycle to work uh, all the time. So at the moment, I'm in the office three days a week. And I can definitely say that I'm, I'm more productive on those three days uh, when I cycle into the office. And I'm kind of ready to hit the ground running. Um, other benefits um, would be the fact that cycling is going to save you time. So there was a study done in UCD uh, where they selected a number of different uh, areas around Dublin and measured the time that it took those people to cycle into Dublin city centre and drive into Dublin city centre um, over, over a period of months. Um, and some of and all of the results showed that in all scenarios it was quicker to cycle uh, in, in in and out of Dublin city centre. So one of the examples was Lucan to Dublin city centre. So uh, there was a ten minute saving each way when compared by cycling than compared to driving. So those ten minutes each way equates to a weekly saving of one and a half hours, a monthly saving of six and a half hours, and a yearly saving of three days. So I think anyone who would be offered an extra three days holidays a year would probably jump 
at the opportunity to do that. So here's a, a graphic from that UCD study. And um, so you can see some of the different areas that they uh, did the study from. And in each case, it was quicker to cycle into Dublin city centre than it was to drive. Uh, in some cases from the likes of Tala, it was 23 minutes quicker. Uh, the example that I used previously was from Lucan into Dublin city centre, and that was 10 minutes quicker. Now, even if you only cycled, let's say if you were a fair weather cyclist and you only cycled the three three months during the summer, you're still going to save about a day, about 21 hours uh, over that over that period. You're you're going to save time. Um, we all know that cycling is a more greener form of transportation, and there's a big push by governments, local authorities, other stakeholders to kind of switch people's mentality, switch people's mode. Of, of transport to a more sustainable method. So um, last year in 2021, the NTA dedicated 240 million euros towards cycling and walking infrastructure. I think that's actually gone up um, and it equates to about 1 million euros per day that they are dedicating to a better, uh, safer, connected infrastructure. Uh, and this made Ireland the first EU member state to meet the European Cyclist Federation recommendation of investing at least 10% of the national transport budget in, in cycling. Um, another cool stat is the rule of 430. So this was con a study conducted by Trek Bicycle Company in America. Um, they, they conducted a sustainability report um, on their carbon footprint and, and everything. And they came up with this stat where if you cycle 430 miles um, that you would have otherwise driven, you're going to save the carbon equivalent of what it took to make your bike. So basically, if we switch that to say kilometers, um, if you cycle 800 kilometers that you otherwise would have taken the car, uh, you're going to offset the carbon footprint of what it took to to manufacture your bike. And um, so 800 kilometers might sound a lot to somebody. Um, but when you break that down, even over a three month summer period, that will be as little as 20 kilometers a day. So if you cycle to work one day a week, you go to the shops on the bike, you drop the kids off to the school or crash, um, you know, that will all, all add up quite quickly uh, and 20 kilometers a week over a three month period is not a, not a huge amount. So it, this brings me on to some of the barriers to entry, some of the common reasons we hear all the time about, you know, why people decide not to cycle, or why they're put off cycling or cycling to work. And um, some of the main reasons are things like safety, the weather, uh, security, and the distance they have to travel. And um, so they're all very valid reasons, but I'm here to try and give you uh, solutions to those and, and how you can mitigate against that. So first of all, safety, um, you know, it's definitely a genuine concern. Um, people might see cycling as an unsafe uh, mode of transport, um, but statistics show that there's actually never been a safer time to, to cycle. Um, when you look at the number of fatalities on the road um, attributed to cycling, um, that's decreased from kind of a peak of 46 in 1990 down to eight uh, in 2019. Um, with the, the fatalities on Irish roads, um, cyclists only account for 6%, while motorists actually account for 53%. Um, there's a greater number of people cycling nowadays. You've probably even noticed it since the pandemic. So the greater number of people cycling, better awareness, better uh, ad campaigns on television and radio, um, it just it all adds up to, um, to, to a safer environment to cycle. Um, the weather definitely plays a part on uh, people's decision whether to cycle or not. Um, but uh, in actual fact, if you cycle or commute to work, Monday to Friday at peak times, 
you only have about a 13% chance of getting uh, rain on. Uh, that equates to about half a day a week. Um, you know, when you look at the likes of Amsterdam, people think Amsterdam, people think bikes, so many, so many thousands, millions of people cycling in Amsterdam. It actually rains more in Amsterdam than it does in Dublin. Um, so, yeah, we don't really have a, an excuse when it comes to, to, to the weather. Um, security, definitely a big concern for people, especially perhaps in Dublin city centre. So how to mitigate against this is how you lock your bike, where you lock your bike, and, and you know what you're using to lock your bike. So um, when you're buying a lock, um, try to you know, get the best lock that you can for your budget. Um, I try to get at least one lock that's going to be 50 euros plus and look at the rating on that lock. Now, not the, not the manufacturer's rating or the brand's rating, but the sole secure rating. So this is an independent company who tests the locks. So try and get like a gold sole secure rating if possible. So there should be a little sole secure symbol on the lock you're purchasing. Um, that's how you know it's been independently tested. Um, try to lock the bike indoors if possible or within uh, an underground car park or within a cage. Um, it's obviously going to increase safety. Um, and then uh, how you lock your bike. So if you look at the three graphics below, there's two examples of how not to lock your bike and one example of the best way to do it. So obviously that shows two locks. And um, so if you can use two locks, great. You're locking the frame on the rear wheel to the to the stand and also the frame and the front wheel to the stand. Um, and then finally, distance uh, is a big uh, kind of reason why people might be put off cycling to work. So from the graphic here, it's kind of the red zone uh, within the M50 corridor is uh, kind of the 10 kilometer radius from cycling in, into, the, into the city center, for example. So that red zone is a 30 minute journey from by bicycle into the city center at cycling at a moderate pace, you know, an average of maybe 20 kilometers per hour. If you live or if this, this distance is too much or you live outside this area, what I'd recommend people could do is use two different modes of transport. So Maybe you might drive part of the way or take the bus or train part of the way and then cycle the remainder. And then over time, try to get off the bus or train a little bit earlier or park a little bit further away and just increase that distance that you're cycling uh, over time. And then eventually you'll build up the confidence, the fitness to actually cycle from home to, to, your, desk, to your work destination. Um, another way to mitigate against this is uh, possibly looking at a folding bike or an electric bike. So folding bike, you'd be able to jump on a bus and train, pop the bike in the back of the car um, a lot easier than a standard bike. Um, and then an e-bike, an electric bike, is just going to make it that bit easier to cycle longer distances over hillier terrain uh, without working up too much of a sweat as well. So that brings me on then to a few points on the bike to work scheme. So uh, if you're not familiar with the bike to work scheme and what it allows you, um, you can apply for up to uh, either 1,250 euro for a general bike or up to 1,500 euro for an e-bike, which uh, your company pays for you up front. And then you pay that amount back through your gross salary before tax. So that means depending on what tax band you're on, you're going to save somewhere between 31 and 51% um, on the cost of that uh, bike. Um, so it's a, it's a great incentive. It can be spread out over a 12 month period if you wish. So it's a, it's a great, great incentive to, uh, to, to, to take up cycling. Um, using our portal, um, if your, most of your companies probably should be, should be set up um, with ourselves, you've over we've over four hundred partner stores uh, to to choose from. So there's plenty of choice, plenty of selection. We cover ninety nine percent of the shops on the island of Ireland. And um, so, if you have any questions though, or any 
queries on shops or the scheme, you can contact our customer service team um, on 015143520 or info at bike2work.ie. So now that brings me on to uh, Scott, Scott Graham, the Marketing Communications Manager with Cycling Ireland. And he's going to run you through um, a few points on Cycling Ireland, the membership and the benefits of, of joining Cycling Ireland. Thanks, Paul. Uh, that was really interesting. Lots of good stats in there and definitely encourages us to get out on the bike. Um, so yeah, look, I'm Scott from Cycling Ireland. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, Cycling Ireland is the national governing body for cycling across the island of Ireland. Um, cycling is actually one of the largest participation sports in the country. That's Sport Ireland research um, that they do. So personal accident, they call, is kind of number one. Um, then you have cycling and then athletics and swimming are, are rating quite high as well. Um, in terms of Cycling Ireland, if you want to click on to the next slide, Paul, uh, previously, I think we were probably more of a sort of a road racing organization and people may have thought it was kind of middle-aged men in Lycra and very serious competitive road racing uh, activities. However, we are transitioning a lot really and, and broadening out uh, what, what we do. So actually we, we now represent um, all of the different disciplines from off-road to BMX, um, competitive, but also non-competitive. So actually our, our membership is is 70 percent leisure cyclists so those are just people who are cycling to work and um, maybe doing leisure sportifs uh, down to the shops cycling on the greenways all those new kind of facilities and um, so yeah essentially there's a, a lot of more of a broader kind of offering and it's it's less focused on competitive competitive stuff uh, so yeah, 700,000 cyclists, this is the latest research from, from Sport Ireland. The number has almost doubled actually over the COVID period. So I think we all saw that as the roads were a bit quieter, a load of people went out on their bikes um, and got to enjoy kind of cycling on, on quiet roads. And maybe they had a bit more time if they're working from home and they're um, commute in the car a little bit less. So it's actually 510,000 adults cycling once a week or more in the Republic. And then because we're an all Ireland body as well, um, it, it totals approximately 700,000 on the island of Ireland. So you can see how big cycling is. I mean, a lot of people talk about GA, soccer, rugby being the kind of three big sports, but actually from a participation perspective, it's actually cycling, jogging and swimming. Um, Paul mentioned this earlier on, but I mean, this is really positive news for, for, for Cycling Ireland and, and everybody who, who wants to um, get out of the car and um, get fit, healthy, enjoy the outdoors. So there is a huge investment in cycling infrastructure. And I think we, we've probably all seen that. I mean, I, I'm not too far away from Dunleary and I see what they've done there in terms of transforming that whole area and making a very safe segregated cycle area so you know you don't have to be um very competent in terms of maneuvering through traffic and so on in your bike you see families out there you see people um uh, people just being able to have a chat while they're while they're cycling without kind of fear of cars and um, in, interacting with them and yeah just in terms of the stats on that so it's actually there's 1200 projects which are underway by the nta and um, everything from upgrading current bike lanes to a totally new new greenways and totally new pieces of infrastructure and their ambition is that they'd have a thousand kilometers of new and improved cycling infrastructure by 2025. There, there was just to add maybe to some of Paul's stats, he touched on this, but this was quite interesting. So in the CSO, they actually found 29% um, of trips were less than two kilometers. So all of those trips are very doable. Well, walking, but we're all time crunch. So sometimes we want to get to the shops and back super quick. But um, there, there's a huge number of trips there that can be very easily converted from the car um, to bike. and 
another stat there is like 70, 79% of journeys up to six kilometers are made by car. So again, there's a huge chunk there uh, of journeys that could be swapped uh, from the car onto the bike. And, you know, for people maybe who are, who are starting out or not confident cycling kind of long distances, or you don't want to arrive into work and um, covered in sweat and, uh, and all that for the day, like e-bikes e are fantastic. Some people maybe think Cycling Ireland wouldn't be an advocate for this, but we definitely are because it's a it's a great way for all age groups to be able to get in, involved in cycling and to you know make your journey easier. And look, if you increase your fitness and you want to transfer just onto a pedal powered bike, you can do that and you get all the the uh, benefits of of being physically active as well. Uh, if you flick on to the next one there, I think, yeah, so member benefits. Um, I think probably just for, for this group, um, we, we have a, a number of different membership options from competitive, which is for people who are doing kind of weekend road racing or a limited competition license for um, mountain biking and um, club races and this kind of stuff. And, you know, some people may start commuting by bike and then decide that they want to get into the competitive realm but a lot of people um won't and they just want to continue enjoying um cycling but the most appropriate membership that we have is the the leisure membership and that is uh, 50 euro for the leisure membership and then there's an optional add-on which is 10 euro for a personal accident cover so in the leisure membership essentially you get um public liability third-party cover there's the optional add-on for the per, for the personal accident cover, and um, there is a, a limit on kind of the the levels of that. Um, it covers up to about two and a half thousand euro um, in in personal injuries. So our leisure membership, it's fifty euro. It's not a replacement for somebody's personal health insurance, which is priced at a different level. It's you know thousand euro for a health insurance policy for a year, and obviously the benefits are. You know in line with that um but it is a, a level of cover to give people some assurance when they're out on the roads and um, there's lots of other benefits included in this and uh, paul mentioned there about safety and locking up your bike and all that kind of stuff so with the cycling iron membership we do uh, we have discounts and benefits from some of our partners so big mo offer a discount on cover for your actual bike so if your bike is uh stolen uh if you're involved in a crash and your expensive gear is is ripped and destroyed all of that kind of stuff they provide cover for that so there's a discount if you're a cycling learner member on that and um, bike register is a national register register and um, they link in with the guardy and they have a marking scheme on your bike so the, the cost for this is quite small. I think it's maybe um, 30 or 40 euro or so. But once you have your bike marked and if it's sold on, they can scan it, link in with the Gardaí and your name is linked to that. So they'll be able to trace it back and, and reconnect you with your with your bike. Um, on the next slide, there are some of the other kind of retail and discount benefits. So um, we have a partnership with Gym Plus Coffee. They do 25 percent. Um, off the off the gear cycle superstore is quite a nice one as well so you know you you pay your 50 euro cycle ireland membership but uh straight away we give you back 20 euro voucher for cycle superstore and a 12.5 percent discount so if you're starting out and you're buying a bike and you're looking to get your helmet your lock um your puncture repair kit all that kind of stuff you have 20 euro off and then you get your extra discount so um a lot of people have come back to us to say they paid their 50 euro but they saved 150 euro because they had to get all the equipment necessary to to get started and get out on the road c sense is another super one so and um, these folks are are based up in in the north they've got really fantastic lights um that feedback data that they they can can centralize and they can measure everything from your average speeds to and um, you can report incidents, you can report potholes, all of this kind of stuff. And they're actually linking in with a lot of the councils. They're working with Belfast City Council, Dublin City Council, 
to to provide this data to say right um you know there's a huge amount of incidents being reported at this particular location council can look at it do we need to improve the infrastructure there so they're really um advanced and they've got another uh, very good product as well called the nowhere gps tracker so if your bike is stolen and you have this device basically you can track it on your on your mobile app and it gives you alerts and um, if your if your um, bike has been moved um bike fit studio kinetic and nutrition look nutritional stuff it's possibly more for competitive people but um bike fit studio i mean having a good bike fit is essential as well for for your comfort and enjoyment so there's a there's a discount there and then training wise again look this may be relevant to commuters or it may be for for people who are um doing longer distances and leisure cycles and so on but uh the training hub is fantastic it's a it's a cycle in ireland resource resource so you can go in there and they have um there's pilates sessions yoga sessions stretching strength and conditioning all this kind of stuff so it's just a a great resource that members can log into and um ha have a look through there and um be able to keep kind of fit and make sure you're um keeping su supple and all the rest um so yeah look that that's pretty much a, a wrap of there's there's various other kind of benefits in there as well that that people can get off off shops and training plans and this kind of stuff but that's pretty much a, a wrap of um cycling ireland's kind of membership offering that's brilliant thank you for that scott um so just as i said in the very beginning um if you have any questions you can raise your hand or you can pop it into the uh, the chat uh, there is a uh, one question in there at the moment in the chat and uh is it tina is looking to find out about um the number of bikes that are allowed on trains if she is splitting her commute between cycling and taking the train uh, scott or paul do either of you know the answer to that the, uh, the number of bikes that are allowed on a train is it yeah i think she was told that she was there was only two bike spots available on on the train okay is that uh, what i've heard before i i would i, I couldn't honestly say exactly and um, it would have to be something we'd have to look into with each operator each different mm -hmm. transport operator so you know um and i don't know the information that might be coming from uh from those operators might vary so i i wouldn't i wouldn't want to comment on on that um i would hope that it's more than two on a train uh it's it seems quite low that number um yeah I, I think it may vary as well that my understanding it varies from um operator but also maybe during peak times um, but I, I I'm not sure the the exact number. Yeah, definitely the timing is a thing. I know it's with Irish Rail, and let's say um, again, I'm just using Dublin as uh, an example because obviously that's where I'm based. But if you're taking the Dart uh, or or the Interrail into uh, Dublin City, I think uh, after uh, between I think seven and ten, they don't allow bikes. Uh, and then again between maybe three and six so it's very much kind of an off peak uh but again listen i think uh if if they can kind of incorporate even an extra carriage just for bikes only it will be a great thing and uh kind of you see on the continent a lot of train services have specific carriages for bikes um so yeah i uh I would hope we will get to that point at some some point down the road but uh at the moment we kind of have to do with, with what we have she's also asking uh the suitability of a folding bike for yeah. going on more kind of distance journeys rather than just a, a short commute she's yeah. talking about the greenway what do you think of that yeah absolutely like well first of all if you're using a folding bike i don't think they count that as a bike on you know you, you can take that at peak times i think it's more uh a, a full-size bicycle that doesn't fall down um so but to the point about using um folding bikes on longer journeys yeah absolutely no problem um uh, there's there's so many options out there um they're all you can get different 
type of gearing you know on the bikes so maybe ones that are are suited to just short commutes that might only have one gear and then other uh folding bikes that are going to have as many gears as you'd find nearly on a, on a regular bike so yeah the, the gearing on a folding bike if you're talking about doing longer journeys will be a key thing to consider when you're when you're making a purchase um but yeah you see people touring on on let's say brompton folding bicycles for instance you can load them up with panniers and all that kind of stuff so uh yeah no no problem doing the distances on greenways and things very good i have a question in from ian who's asking um about providers of insurance for e-bikes uh so he was given a quote he says of 450 euro on a 5k bike and uh, he said that he only found one to two one to two providers of insurance for e-bikes would you yeah look, i know that the the bigmo company um should do insurance on on e-bikes and they would do uh, insurance on expensive kind of racing bikes as well so i i don't think that they'd have an issue in terms of the the value of it and um, because they they would cover you know racing bikes which may be seven eight nine ten ten thousand um so so that would be would be one provider and there's a, a 7.5 percent discount um with cycling ireland but there, there may be other ones out there as well would you know like off the top of your head scott what um say the the cost of insurance would be would it be done based um, on the, the retail value like for instance that guy was saying it's a five grand e-bike and it, it, it's coming in maybe 10 percent of the value of the bike yeah i mean that 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 probably does sound about right um the the bike the bike and uh equipment cover is not not cheap um but uh, they they do have some nice benefits there around like obviously if you if you crash and the bike is is written off um and your equipment as well your your clothing and your helmet and all that kind of stuff as well so uh yeah it, it is it is not cheap um it is a couple of hundred euro a year and um, so yeah, that's kind of a trade-off for for some people i i know some people who do have it i personally don't have it on my my bikes um, so I guess people just would, would weigh up the kind of risk and the costs. It's going to be cheaper than car insurance anyway, I think. For sure. Um, one more quick question then for the, for the two of you, are smart locks worth the money? Smart locks could, uh, I've actually never come across a smart lock. I presume yeah. is it, a uh, something that you open and close some maybe kind of tracking some or something in it or maybe it's a uh, connected yeah. to an app or something um yeah if the if, if the person wants to elaborate on that a little bit more i'd be interested on hearing uh i would have only experience with like a mechanical lock with a key uh or a combination obviously the, the keys tend to be that little bit uh stronger um so i, I don't have any experience personally with um a smart lock other than the ones you'd see on the the bike sharing schemes like uh bleeper bike they've got those smart locks that you open with your phone so that's I presume that's maybe what the the person is referring to um, yeah that's what he's just came back yeah bluetooth locks that link to your phone i okay. think that they have some kind of like of a, a, a motion sensor so that if it's been tampered with it sends you an alarm an alarm and and sometimes there's an audible alarm with them as well um i'm not sure the, the, the cost of them i'm sure they're not cheap and um, but again I'd, I'd always refer someone back to the soul secure rating and um, which is an independently tested uh test that's done by a third party company soul secure and they have different ratings depending on how good or how long it's taken them to break the, into the lock and um, so they've you know gold diamond uh platinum all these different kind of ratings um, so I would definitely refer to that rating um, and try and weigh up the, the the costs. But yeah, the the additional benefits of of having been able to open it with your phone, um, it's it might be just something different that a thief not, might not have come across before. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, yeah. Yeah, the audible alarm would be would be good, you know, in terms of scaring them off. But I suppose in terms of sending the alarm to your phone, it would depend on how quickly you could get to the bike, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well that's it yeah 
Um, yeah, look, I think the the U like a really good solid U lock is is a really good option. Um, you can get them for sort of you know between fifty and a hundred that that kind of range. Um, so they're they're really solid. And then the other thing is people may just check out the 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 the, the C sense um, nowhere GPS. So basically, if your bike is moved it sends an alert to your phone and you can just track it exactly. So you can, you can basically tell the guards exactly where it is. And so yeah. that's an interesting um, safety device that I'm aware of. I actually use their lights as well, Scott, and they have that built into their lights as well. So if you're say you have your bike um, outside against a, a cafe or a shop and you're inside getting something and someone moves your bike, it sends a, um a notification to your to your phone and it'll pop up that you know your bike has moved so that's built into their c sense lights as well very good um well that's it i know that we've gone over on time i'm very appreciative that everybody has uh, kind of hung in and stayed there with us and um, scott paul thank you both very much for the presentations today there's loads of information there that everyone can take away with them um, on that, we will be, um, or we have been recording the uh, the session, so we will be sending the recording out to everybody who did register. So um, without further ado, thank you, Scott. Thank you, Paul. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining Thanks, us. Everyone. Cheers for that. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.